are having an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, night, whatever it is for you. When today's video finally reaches you, you guys, for today's video, I am so excited because it has been a hot minute since we've dove into popular paranormal games, how to play them, why you shouldn't play them, and the dangers of laying them. And for today's video, we are going to be diving into a popular paranormal game, especially in the sleepover world, and that is light as a feather, stiff as a board. Now, I want to give a very quick disclaimer in today's video before getting started, and that is, while I might warn against paranormal games, I am by no means a complete paranormal expert, and I am in no way insinuating that if you play a paranormal game, you will 100% have a negative experience or that you will 100% attract a negative entity. My only warning that I want to say is that when you are opening doors to the unknown, it is exactly that, the unknown. And it's not always as easy as hoping for something positive to occur. So just really, really be cautious when you are playing paranormal games if it is something that you decide to do. Protect yourself, make sure that you've read the rules properly and just be as safe as possible. Well, like a thousand people to 10,000 people to who knows how many people could have really positive experiences with paranormal games. There are a select few who have horrible experiences. So just keep that in mind when you are deciding whether or not to play paranormal games. I will say, when I was a kid, a lot of my friends wanted to make makeshift Ouija boards and play a whole bunch of paranormal games at sleepovers as well, so it does happen. But yeah, just err on the side of caution, and without further ado, let's get into today's video. So like I said at the beginning of the video, there are a ton of popular paranormal games that are most popular at sleepovers. And Light as a Feather, Stiff as a Board was one of those sleepover games that a lot of people have played. Actually, let me know in the comments below if you guys have played this game. And the other day, actually, I was reminiscing on my childhood and games that I used to play, and there's a specific game I wanna get into with you guys this coming week because I really haven't heard much about it, and it used to work as well. So. I never actually played Light as a Feather, Stiff as a Board, I don't think. And if I did, I don't remember it. But let's get into exactly how it is played and what the dangers of this game are. Now, before you comment down below saying, Haley tells us not to play the game, but then proceeds to tell us how to play the game. In order to tell you guys like why these games could go wrong or could be dangerous, it is important to outline the rules of the game, how the game is played, and what steps are in the wrong direction, in my personal opinion. So without further ado, here we go. So I'm just on WikiHow, actually, because I feel like this is one of those sites that you would look up when you were having a sleepover to play this game. And here's what it says. It actually says that like Ouija boards, light as a feather, party trick has been a staple sleepover game for years. In fact, it's been played for centuries. In this supernatural game, a single person is lifted solely by the fingers of four or five people surrounding them. Is it levitation? The power of suggestion. A specific combination of muscle tension, balance, and distribution of weight Whatever the explanation, it certainly looks magical. Step one, lay the person you're going to lift flat on the ground with their arms crossed over their chest. You may wanna put blankets or pillows underneath them, both for their comfort and for their protection in case they are dropped. The lifters should kneel or sit beside the liftee, preferably with one person at each shoulder and one person at each knee. If you have a fifth person, they should kneel at the liftee's head. Step two, make one of the lifters the leader. This could be the party host or anyone who knows the game well. They are in charge of guiding the group through the trick, so they must know how to do the trick from start to finish. It helps if the leader is a bit theatrical. The leader has to tell the group about the spooky, supernatural origins of the game, and it's much more fun if they really sell it. Clasp your hands together. Release your two pointer fingers, which will be the only fingers you use to lift. 
The lifters should then place both fingers underneath the liftee's shoulders or knees depending on where they are seated. If there is a fifth lifter at the head, they can place one finger beneath each shoulder. Step four, perform the test lift. The leader should instruct everyone to give it a try, but there should be no countdown or special setup, simply attempt to lift. You probably won't be able to lift very high, if at all. They will feel too heavy to lift with just two fingers. At this point, the leader should tell the group that it isn't working because the liftee hasn't become possessed yet. Because the group hasn't performed the mystical chant yet, the spirits have not been summoned. Now it's time to get serious. Prepare to lift again. Once you've established how difficult it is to lift the person, it's time to employ some simple mind over matter tricks to increase your strength, or at least increase the mystical nature of the game. This is also a good time for the leader to explain the concept behind the game. The leader can be creative. They can explain how the person's body will be taken over by the spirit of a deceased person, turning corpse-like and levitating. Make it as creepy or as funny as you'd like. Dimming the lights and adding candles can add a supernatural quality to the trick. Place your hands over the head of the person being lifted. Hands should alternate so each person's hands are separated by another person's. Press down on the liftee's head slightly, of course. The leader should tell the group that they are opening the liftee's body to supernatural influences with this step. And at this time, the outside spirits are entering the body. Remove your hands from the stack and place them again under the liftee. Repeat in unison, light as a feather, stiff as a board. You may also have heard the variation, light as a feather, strong as an ox. Together, repeat this over and over and over again. The lift D should be perfectly still with their eyes closed. As you chant, slowly start to lift. Lift the person while continuing to chant. This time around, they should lift with ease. Then, slowly lower them back to the ground as you continue to recite the words. The leader should then command the spirits to exit the body, and voila, you've completed the trick. And that's how you play, light as a feather, stiff as a board. Now, for me personally, I just feel as though unless you're somebody who's experienced, knows what you're doing, or really doesn't care about what could be the repercussions of it, you really should not attempt to open up your body to any spirit to possess you. In my personal opinion, like I said at the beginning of the video, you could do this and absolutely nothing could happen or you could open up your body to something that may not want to leave or might form an attachment to you. Well, it definitely sounds like a really cool game and a really cool trick, it's very unsettling to me that there is a step where you are welcoming something to possess an individual laying there. And from what I read on people's experiences online, a lot of times when someone is actually laying there while it's being performed on them, they feel open to something coming within them too because they believe that's how you're supposed to play the game. In different versions of the rules, people say that you can ask anything to enter the body, anything to make you just light as a feather, stiff as a board. And yes, at the end, it does say that the leader should command the spirit to leave. But what if what you've welcomed in is much stronger than just being told to leave? Demons need permission to enter. So games like this can be incredibly dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, or you don't know what could happen if you are one of those people who has a negative experience. I don't know, you guys. To me, it just seems like a recipe for disaster, but that's also because I spend my days diving into the light and dark side of the paranormal, and I just know that personally, I would never want to subject myself to opening my body as a vessel to whatever may be lingering around. But I'd love to know all of your guys' opinions down below. Have you played the game? Do you think it's just that, just a game? What are your guys' theories? I actually was reading a couple different theories as to why people could suddenly lift this individual that they couldn't lift at the beginning. And a couple of theories are, number one, mind over matter, because you believe that this person is light as a feather, stiff as a board, you can lift them. Others think that perhaps it is a supernatural thing. Some think that it's a dark force, just allowing it to happen. 
but nobody really knows. Some actually think that there could even be a science to it. So I'm very curious to know your guys' opinions down below, and that is it for today's video. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, I would absolutely love it if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button and please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And remember, my loves, do all things with kindness. Until next time, I love you.